السلام عليكم ورحمة الله مرحبا بكم مجددا في محاضرة جديدة من سلسلة محاضراتنا لمراجعة أسئلة اختبارات Parametric Review of Parametric Test Question This is lecture number one in infection control and number four in phase review Today we are going to discuss 10 question from question number 34 up to question number 43 معكم محمد إسماعيل يحيى نبدأ مباشرة Question number 34. Which of the following is an example of epidemic point source? The options are number A, tuberculosis, number B, public health agency, number C, contaminated water source, number D, communicable disease pavilion. The correct option is option number C, contaminated water source. Let's see the number C, let's see the ration. Epidemic point source or point source outbreaks, however, it is one of the ways of disease transmission in which Person are exposed over a brief time to the same source, such as contaminated foods or water, or infected food handler, or an event. So the correct option is option number C, which is contaminated water source. Question number thirty-five. A thirty-two years old man develops. Chronic productive cough. He has not been feeling hungry and has lost three kilogram body weight in the past three weeks. On examination of his lung fields, there was diminished breathing and widespread crickles. An early morning sputum culture was positive. What is the most likely route of transmission? The options are number A, body fluid. Number B, airborne. Number C, fecal oral. Number D, contact. We'll give the video here. Oختار الخيار اللي تشوفه سهل. The correct option is option number B, airborne. ليه اخترنا الخيار رقم B نشوف رشنا. From the situation, it appears that the patient has TB. Tuberculosis. Is caused by bacterium called Mycobacterium tuberculosis. These bacteria are spread through the air, airborne infection, from one person to another. When a person with the TB disease of the lung or throat coughs, speaks, or sings, people nearby may breathe in this bacteria and become infected. So, TB is Airborne disease. So the correct option is option number B, which is airborne. Question number 36. Eight year old man is diagnosed with tuberculosis, isolated in negative pressure room. Which of the following should wear a face mask? The options are number A, patient health care providers. Number B, all people who enter the patient's room. Number C, person has close contact with the patient. Number D, family members who are at risk for infection. The correct option is option number B, all patients who enter the patient's room. A negative pressure isolation room is commonly used for patients with airborne infection. For patients under airborne precaution, all persons entering the patient room should wear a fit-tested seal jacket N95 mask instead of medical mask. So, the correct option is option number B. Which is all people who enter the patient room should wear face mask. 
Question number 37. A nurse working in medical unit is preparing to with droplet precaution measures in place. The following personal protective equipment I wear. What is the correct sequence of putting the equipment on? Personal protective equipment. The options are number A, face mask first and then gown and then eyewear and gloves. Number B, gown first, face mask, eyewear and gloves. Number B, number C, eyewear first, gloves, face mask and gown. Number D, gloves first, gown, face mask and eyewear. وقف الفيديو هنا واختار الخيار بشوف سهل. The correct option is option number B which is gown and then face mask and then eyewear and gloves. اللي اخترنا الخيار رقم B نشوف راشن. Sequence for putting on personal protective equipment is as follow. الترتيب اللي بنلبس فيه هو personal protective equipment. Number one, perform hand hygiene and put on gown and then put on face mask and put on protective eyewear and finally put on gloves. So the correct option is option number B, which is gown and face mask and then eyewear and gloves. Question number 38. A nurse working in medical unit is going out for removing with droplet precaution measures in place. The following personal protective equipment I wear. What is the correct sequence of putting the equipment off? A tertip al personal protective equipment. The options are Number A, face mask first, and then gown, eyewear, and final gloves. Number B, gown first, then face mask, eyewear, and gloves. Number C, eyewear first, gloves, face mask, and gown. Number D, gloves first, gown, eyewear, and face mask. We'll give the video here, and the answer is the best. The correct option is option number D. The gloves, gown, eyewear, and then face mask. Let's turn the question. The correct sequence of putting the equipment of personal protective equipment as follow. First, remove gloves and perform hand hygiene. Using alcohol, if not available, use soap and water. Then remove gown and also perform hand hygiene. Then exit the patient room and then after remove eye protection and also perform hand hygiene. And finally remove mask or respirator and then wash your hand with soap and water. So the correct sequence of removing personal protective equipment is number D which is left spheres gown and then I wear and face mask. Question number 39. Mr. X attended in outpatient clinic with symptoms of shortness of breath, diarrhea, severe respiratory distress, and is strongly suspected of having which of the following disease? Number A, coronavirus. Number B, Swine flu number C Zika virus number D hepatitis. The correct option is option number A, which is coronavirus. The main clinical manifestation of COVID-19 infection are fever, dry cough, and shortness of breath. 
in addition to other symptoms, may include sore throat, runny nose, diarrhea, fatigue, tiredness, and difficulty of breathing in severe cases. So the correct option is option number A, which is coronavirus. The remaining options are incorrect. Why? Because there are no shortness or breeze or difficulty of breathing in cases of swine flu or Zika virus and hepatitis. Question number 40. A nurse receives a telephone call from the admission office of the hospital and is told that a patient with streptococcal meningitis will be admitted to the medical unit. The nurse is planning to apply infection control measure for the patient. Which type of isolation precautions the nurse must observe? The options are number A, droplet precaution, number B, contact precaution, number C, airborne precaution, number D, a standard precaution. Okay, and the shoe say. The correct option is option number A, which is droplet percussion. Leh akhtar na khayar rakam A na shuf ration. Streptococcal meningitis occur when streptococcus pneumonia bacteria invades the bloodstream, crosses the blood brain barrier, and multiply within the fluid surrounding the spine and brain, CSA. The disease transmitted from one person to another through a tiny droplet from an infected person's mouth, throat, or nose. So, patients should be placed on droplet precaution to a private room, mask for all entering the room until they have completed 24 hours of appropriate antibiotic therapy. So, the correct option is option number A which is droplet precautions. Question number 41. Identify the bacteria not associated with the cause of bacterial meningitis. The options are number A, Cryptococcus pneumoniae; number B, Haemophilus influenzae, number C, Neisseria meningitis, number the Streptococcus pneumonia. Look at the video here. واختار الخيار بتشوزه. The correct option is option number A, which is Streptococcus pneumonia. ليه اخترنا الخيار رقم A نشوف راشن. Streptococcus pneumonia is a fungi and not responsible for the development of bacterial meningitis. The rest can cause Bacteria meningitis. So the correct option is option number A, Cryptococcus pneumoniae. Question number 42. A 35-year-old patient was admitted to a medical ward with confirmed diagnosis of meningococcal infection. Which of the following infection control interventions the nurse should implement? The options are number one. Droplet precaution, number B. Contact precaution, number C. Airborne precaution, number D. Standard precaution. Okay, the video is not far away. Let's see if it's safe. The correct option is option number A, which is droplet precaution. Let's see if it's safe. Let's see if it's safe. Meningococcal meningitis is caused by bacterium known as Neisseria meningitis. The bacteria are transmitted from person to a person through droplet of respiratory or throat secretion from the carriers. Therefore, patients should be placed on droplet precaution. So the correct option is option number A, which is droplet precaution. Question number 43. A 16-month-old child was hospitalized in an intensive care unit with multi-resistant sepsis. On the third day, she had expulsive diarrhea. 
a stool sample was sent to the laboratory for CT results investigation. Which of the following transmission based precaution is most appropriate? The options are number A, combination airborne and droplet number B, contact number C, droplet number D, airborne. We'll give a video in Octal Herb Chufse. The correct option is option number B. Lechternal Herb can be in a shoe rational. Colostridium difficile, often referred to as C. difficile or C. diff, is a bacterium that can cause symptoms ranging from diarrhea to life threatening inflammation of the colon. The primary mode of transmission for C. difficile within healthcare facilities is by person to person spread through the fecal oral route. So, Patients suspected or confirmed to have C. difficile infection should be placed on contact precaution, preferably in a single room, until the diarrhea is resolved or its cause is determined. So, the correct option is option number B, which is contact precaution. Shukran Jazeelan. That covered in other area. Don't forget to support us by comment, like, or subscribe.